Hi, and welcome to another episode of the show, Must Go On. Today's guest is actor of EastEnders, The Nest, and London Kills is Bailey Patrick. Let's get this show started. When is your earliest memory of coming into the knowledge of acting and thinking you might do that in life? My earliest knowledge of thinking when I wanted to get into it. Um, I've always been, uh, my mum was a big, big fan of film and theatre uh, growing up. So she's always sort of exposed me to as many different things as possible growing up with from, uh, from, um, from a working class background. So any chance to go to the theater or watch a film was a big deal, uh, big deal for me. So I would always be engrossed in, in anything to do with acting or uh, performance. Um, but I didn't really feel that I, uh, I kind of got into it until I was around, I'm, I'm turning 34 next month. And I reckon when I was about 18, 19, I started to realize actually that's, that's something that I might like to do. Um, and I kind of got into it through uh, stand-up. I was a big fan of stand-up comedy. I used to go and watch a lot of stand-up comedy. And I thought that I'd like to give it a go myself. So I sort of Googled a couple of places and bits and pieces and courses that I could do. And um, I gave it a go and um, was actually, fortunately enough, quite successful it for a couple of, couple of attempts, a couple of nervous attempts. And I really enjoyed it. And um, someone mentioned to me to go to university to do a course. Uh, in in acting and performance and that kind of led me into getting my first taste of of performing properly you know with a script uh, on stage and as soon as I did that so I must have been about 18, 19 um, I did that and I got bitten by the bug really the the rest is history that really kind of cemented within me that I wanted to to get involved with acting and and to give it a go and and so yeah originally it was through comedy um, and that was my kind of primary Aim was to sort of do do comedy shows and sketches and bits and pieces like that, and then and then I found uh, later on things such as Shakespeare and, and more sort of the dramatic side of it, um, which I'm completely still in love with to this day. Actually, really, so yeah, it was about eighteen, nineteen that I really took, took to, you know took the first moves to to really get into it. But I think it's been something that's always been on a back burner that I've always been interested in. But I've kind of pushed to the side. I did a lot of sport when I was growing up, so I think that took center stage as it were, and then, and then things changed around for me. Cool, so personally, I believe every industry is difficult to get your foot in, but most people think the entertainment business is the hardest. And right. um, so was there ever a hesitation for you to consider something else or when you, when you decided I'm doing this, were you all in from the beginning? So yeah, it's a great question. Um, I'm kind of, I'm very, my mum's side of the family are Irish, they're very stubborn. So once we decide to do something, we kind of stick at it. But um, I can't ever say that there hasn't been times when I've kind of had to reevaluate, you know, what I wanted to do and, and, and to have to really seriously think about how the entertainment industry was going to affect me mentally and financially. Um, and so, yeah, there's been times when it's been really tough kind of starting out, leaving drama school and, and, you know, you do, you do three years at drama school over here um, and, you know, there's certain people that do well at drama school, certain people that don't, but, you know, you kind of find your place within within your group, in your year group. And uh, you kind of, you develop this kind of persona that, you know, you think that when you come out in the real world, it's going to be like this for you. And, you know, you, you feel like those places will continue when you leave. And unfortunately, they don't. And I think a lot of people that didn't necessarily believe in themselves that much flew when they came out of drama school and did really well. And I think that a lot of people that thought they were going to do really well, unfortunately, had huge gaps of unemployment. Um, with me, I, I, I found it very difficult when I left. I didn't, I didn't secure a massive agent. Um, it was kind of difficult to get going. But what that did for me was really made me dig deep inside and think, is this what I want to do? Do I really want to do this? You know, I'm, I'm, I was having to do work, lots of different jobs to try and schedule in being able to audition at the same time, which is very difficult as many people know. Um, and it really kind of pushed me to my limit to, to, to really understand, you know, if you're going to do this, you need to earn money for one and you need to earn money doing it. And that will inspire you to keep going, you know, and, um, 
so yeah, I, I, I kept on doing these rubbish jobs and, and bits and pieces. And I, I did have times when I thought, you know, this isn't, this is never going to happen. And I don't really think those days go away because even when you, even when you're doing well, there's always that opportunity that something could happen to, to you know, to, to mean that you, you're not going to, you know, you're not necessarily going to work straight off the back of another job or exactly the situation that's happening now where, you know, the whole world is in this pandemic. You know, work was was flowing for me, and and then uh, all of a sudden everything's been put on hold, and it does it. You know, it can affect you mentally if you don't, if you're not in the right mind frame. But I think that the one thing that um, not having not having the job straight away when you come out of drama school, I think it, you either go two ways: you either give up or you work harder. And I think that I I just got it in between my the bit in between my teeth, and I was like, I'm not giving up until I'm all over the TV, non-stop working. And I'm happy with what I'm, you know, with what I'm doing. I don't want to do work that I'm happy with and that, that makes, because at the end of the day, that, that's, that's what I kind of sat down and said to myself, does this make you happy? Would you do it for free? And I would do it for free. I still would do it for free. Don't say it too loudly because people might not start, not pay me anymore, but um, it is something that I love doing. And, and I really sort of sat down and said to myself, you have to work as hard as you can to be able to make sure that, you know, that question doesn't have to come in as often as it does now. You know, it's that you're in a position where you can, you know, you can finish a day and, and talk to your friends and say, you know, I'm genuinely happy with what I do. Even if it might be a struggle every now and again, the positives outweigh the negatives every single time, every single time. And, you know, I think that the, the lucky, the more fortunate you are in, in the industry and the more work that you do and the, the more incredible people that you work with, both, you know, on and off screen, um, that kind of pushes you to just want to want to go further and do more, and and that question has sort of been pushed further and further to the back of my mind as of as got, as I've gone on. But it's, it was definitely at the beginning. It was it was a question that I was very familiar with, <laughs> and uh, it, I think it forces you to do a lot of soul searching and, and learn about yourself and and really find out. You know, I think that there was. I remember when I first um, my first ever day at RADA. I did a foundation course at RADA years ago when I first started, and I can remember walking into this room and it was kind of like Hogwarts at Harry Potter. And a lot of the students there were very, you know, very sort of upper middle class and I'm from a working class background. So I felt really alienated anyway. And we sat around this big table and this very posh lady sat us down and there was all these acting books and pictures of all the alumni that have come through there. And um, she sat down and she was, she said, do, do, do you want to be an actor to me? And I was like, oh, I don't know. And she said, do you seriously want to be an actor? And I said, well, yeah, I'm thinking about it. And she was like, you can never think, you must know. Always, you must know. Whatever you do in this industry, be sure of it. And I thought, you know what, to this day, I, I still hear her sort of echoing through my head. And it was, it was a good sort of wake up call to say, you know, you can't dither and dather in this industry. You know, there's, there's a hundred other people, you know, behind you in your footsteps waiting to give it their all. And you, you know, you have to give it 110%. And if you're not willing to make sacrifices and sort of put everything into it, and there's no point even even trying to think about getting into it, really, to be honest. So I know for me, um, after leaving school, yeah, and going into the real world, if I felt like they didn't really prepare me for the real world, okay. So was there any when you finally left school and you started auditioning and you started looking for work? Was there anything in the entertainment business that kind of took you off guard that? you weren't really warned about while you were in school? That's a good question. Uh, yeah, most of it, I'd say. <laughs> I'd say most of it. I think they, they kind of lure you into, uh, not through their own fault. I, I don't think they can prepare you for for the big wide world, unfortunately. I don't think that, you know, even if they try to do exercises with you or try to present certain situations, I think everyone's path when they come out is different. Everyone's going to have different experiences. And, um, I think it's a really difficult thing to be able to prepare you for it. But I think that's that's where you're, I feel like you get your foundation in your training, obviously, when, you, when you're when you at school and, you know, you, you learn your skills there and you learn what you're willing to do and where you need to improve. But I feel when you come out into the into the real world, that's your real lessons. They're your real classes. That's for the next however many years you're going to be involved in whatever you're doing. That's when you learn. That's your class. And you have to kind of become your own teacher in that sense. Even when things don't go well for you, you have to come home and think, why didn't it go well? What, what did I do that, what could I do better for the next time? Or what did that person do that, that stopped me from, you know, doing what I'm doing? And, and you, you, I think you constantly have to evaluate 
what you're doing and constantly learn. I, I, I try my hardest to, I think that I got a little bit complacent in drama school that we would do lessons and we would do stuff and I'd be like, oh, I, I was quite good there. I was good and sort of believed in myself a little bit too much. And now coming out and working with other people, I would be like, wow, oh my God, well, I'm not even anywhere near prepared as these people. These people are, you know, they're on fire. They're, they're ridiculous. I need to be more like these people. So they kind of, watching other people for me is a really big thing. I like to, when I film stuff now, I like to stay behind and watch certain actors work and, and see how they work on camera, how they use their techniques and, you know, how they prepare. It's really interesting for me to see different ways of doing stuff. It might not necessarily work for me, but I'm very interested in watching other people's crafts and the way that, you know, I think you can learn a lot from watching other people. And I think that the more I work, the more I tend to do that. Probably gets irritating for people because I'm sort of sticking around at the back there. Um, but I think it's a really good, really good thing to do because, you, you know, life in itself is a constant lesson. You're always learning every day, you know, in, in your day-to-day -day life, let alone your career. So I think it's a really good good idea to just kind of take everything you can from from those experiences out in a big wide world but I don't yeah I don't think I think everything's been a shock you know how to how to juggle real life with with work um you know how to constantly motivate yourself how to how to get you know discipline for, for, the, for the jobs that you're going to do and and, to, and for auditioning and there's, there's lots to think about I think when you come out and that that can't I don't think that, that that's specific to uh, each one of us everyone has their different kind of way of life and their, their, their patterns and they need to kind of make sure that that works and it integrates with their everyday life when they, when they come out. And I think as soon as you can get to grips with that, then you can start flying. Awesome. So what was your first gig that you successfully got after an audition? My first gig? Wow. Um, God, I'm trying to think back now. I'll tell you what, yeah, my first, my first TV my first ever TV job that I was sort of buzzing about really was uh, it was about a year, I think it was about a year after being in drama school. It was a very small part, um, but I was really excited because it was with an actor called Stephen Graham, who's a fantastic British actor. He's done, done a lot in the States as well, and he's a big film actor. Um, and he was playing this, uh, this, this kind of security guard that was uh, chasing after criminals and it was, it was called The Watchman and I landed a role as a policeman in this in this thing and I only had a couple of lines but the lines were with him and I was so excited I was really really excited and it was my first TV gig and uh, I remember I'd, I'd been literally I, I don't think I could sleep for the, for a couple of days I was so excited and I went to film it and we uh, we were filming in in the middle of nowhere in a car park at silly o'clock in the morning it was you know really cold freezing cold I had to wait around for ages I didn't know about all of this stuff. I'd never really sort of filmed anything. So this is all new to me. Um, but I was absolutely buzzing and we kind of got round to my bit and the sun was coming up and they were kind of, they wanted to get this shot done really quickly. So they kind of rushed my part. So I rushed it and I thought, oh, well, that's, you know, fair enough. That's, that's obviously how it goes. This is the thing, you know. And I told everyone that I knew that, you know, I'm going to be on TV in, a, in a two, three months time, I'm going to be on Channel 4 with Stephen Graham. This is me, you know, I've arrived now. You know, I've come out, I've done my three years training. I'm going to be on TV. This is going to be great. I was so excited. And uh, I think we, I gathered all my family and friends. We all, we all got, got together in, in my house and uh, and we put it on. And then just as it came to my bit, they'd cut me. And it literally you just saw, saw my feet running up some stairs. And I was like, that was me, that was me, that was me, that was me. And uh, yeah, it, it really, really embarrassing. It was ridiculous. I was so embarrassed that they'd cut me from the show and I didn't, you know, I didn't get to do my thing, but it taught me to never ever rely on thinking that you're going to be anything in, in anything that you film, you know, Any, anything could be cut and it could be edited in any different way. So I've tended to keep my mouth shut from, from then on. <laughs> <laughs> but they were my feet and I did excellent foot, uh, excellent running. So. <laughs> so other than, um, make sure you know, you want to be in the business, any advice to someone out there who's, and thought and not really know. Any advice you have to anyone who want to get in the business? Starting out. Um, yeah, I think, um, yeah, make sure you're kind of specific in what you want to go into, I think. I definitely think that helps. If you can have a, have a goal, like I said to you before, like I kind of got into it through comedy and then other things sort of led me into to doing more sort of serious drama. But, you know, if you're really good at comedy and that's what you want to do, you need to make sure that you sort of head towards that line of work, you know, don't waste your time doing other stuff that you, you know, sort of make sure you're streamlined and make sure you're heading in the right direction to where you want to be. Make sure you're writing to the right people 
uh, in industry, make sure you're going to watch the right stuff connected, you know, with what you're doing. Um, and it's a really difficult one. I think lots of people used to say this to me, but you don't really realise it until you come out. It's, just, it's, it's being true to yourself. It's, it's, it's a really difficult thing to put into practice. It's very easy to say. But um, I think the more individual and the, the more in tune you are with yourself, the, the further you'll go and, and the more people will gravitate towards you because, you know, no one else can be you. Um, there's only one you and you need to believe in yourself and just have fun, I would say. You know, whatever you want to get into and whatever you want to do, um, just make sure it's fun because otherwise what's the point in doing it and you, you need to be able to do it when you know I've had times when I've been shooting in the rain and it's freezing cold in Scotland or you know in the middle of the countryside or you know and it's this or I'm doing night shoots from five in the evening till five in the morning and it's a little bit difficult you know and you're tired and you might have things going on in your life but I still smile and have fun you know and it's because it's something that I love doing so you need to just make sure However you can do that, make sure that you're positive, you're going into what you want to do, you know, and it will always make you smile. If you do it for free, then it's definitely the right way. Okay, and how are things where you are? Are you somewhat halfway auditioning and rehearsing or are you completely shut down? So unfortunately at the moment, um, we're, we're pretty much shut down. I think things are going to start rolling again April, May. Obviously we can't be 100% definite, but the projects that I had uh, lined up for it was almost a year ago now um everything's been sort of postponed to august september time um but there's uh we've been doing lots of zoom calls and meetings with, with projects uh that are coming up which is great fun um haven't obviously auditioned in person for a long long time um which is a shame and i look forward to doing that again but um yeah, lots of self-tapes lots of meetings voiceovers and bits and pieces and there's lots of stuff that that's brewing that's going to be uh very exciting to, to to delve into towards sort of late spring early summer so um very much chomping at a bit to get back to work as i'd imagine most people are but um it's another another you know another reason to to really know you love doing what you're doing because you miss it so much you know and you've been you're raring to go and um i think everyone's going to appreciate it a lot more when they get back to work right um so my last question that i have for you a fun question Yep. Um, pretend this is for play. Okay. If you could work with anyone in the acting business, whether they're a director, producer, actor, whether they're dead or alive, who would it be and why? Wow. Okay. That's a really difficult one. You stumped me there. Um, God, that's difficult. Who would I... Do you know what? I'll tell you who I'd actually love for, love for fun, actually. I'd love to work with Christopher Walken because he... I think he's one of those people just, just ridiculously talented in every way. He's one of those people who just oozes charisma and talent. And I'd love to just see how he approaches, you know, he lifts a script uh, into, into, into sort of action. And, and I'd love to hear his delivery. I'd, lo I'd love to just be around him working. It'd be amazing, amazing to see, see him work. And, and uh, yeah, work with him. I think working with him would be amazing. I'd, I'm always drawn to everything that he's in. He's... Uh, yeah, he's just, just got that charm and, and that charisma and just, like I say, he just seems to be so talented. He just makes you look effortless and I'd love to sort of get inside his brain and, and find out how to do that because I'd like a bit of that. <laughs> well, that is all the time we have for you today on The Show Must Go On. I want to thank Bailey Patrick for taking the time to talk with me and of course to the audience. Thank you again for watching another episode of The Show Must Go On. Thank you for taking the time to watch CSB television. Have a great day.